So there was a troll in the comments who said, Lose the cat. I will not. I will not change who I am for you. But I will mock you for saying such things. Now this video is not actually about comment trolls, although they are hours of fun. This video is actually a response to a valued viewer named Texas Jazz. Texas Jazz says, I would like to track a soccer ball and keep it centered in the frame. How can I get the tracker to stay centered during the clip? Now what I think you're referring to here is something called the locked on effect. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do that locked on effect using nothing but built-in native features in Final Cut Pro. Now I did not create or discover this method. This was originally posted by Cody Wanner, who's another YouTuber out there, makes a lot of great videos. I'll post a link to his channel and to his original video about this down in the description below. So let's dive in and actually talk about how to do the locked on effect in Final Cut Pro using nothing but the native features. To demonstrate this Effect, I have a couple of different clips over here in Final Cut Pro. Now, the goal here is to create a tracker that tracks the inverted position of the object we want to lock in on, and then make a duplicate of that clip that's going to follow that tracker we created so that the movement of the visible clip that's on top will negate the movement of the tracked object, thus keeping it centered. Now, it's easiest to understand this by just doing it. So, the first step, we're going to want to actually invert this original video clip, meaning that we're going to want to flip it vertically and horizontally. Now the easiest way to do this over here in Final Cut Pro is to set the scale value to a negative number. Now it's important here to use a larger resolution video than the final product to make this work because the video that follows this tracker is going to be moving around. So we're going to want to zoom in a little bit on this so that there's some room around the video. So in this example here, I'm using some 4K clips and those are going to be rendered down to 1080p. So we have some room around this actual clip to work with here. So I'm going to go over here to my actual scale and I'm going to set that to negative 120. Now, like I said, Said, we wanted to zoom in a little bit so the negative 120 essentially is zooming in 20% more than it was before and so now I have some actual room around this image to move and now that we have the actual image scaled the way that we want what we need to do is apply a tracker so I'm going to scroll down I'm going to make sure I have my video clip selected scroll down to the bottom of my inspector over here and I'm going to choose trackers and I'm just going to click on that tracker hit the plus and that's going to add a tracker to the scene here and since this is a ball we're going to actually make the tracker round so you just click this little handle over here in the corner drag it in so it makes a circle and then if you hold down the shift key and you move these handles out here, it will uniformly resize the tracker. So I'm just going to kind of move the tracker over here to the center of the ball. And then I'm just going to resize it to be basically the size of the ball itself. And so this tracker right here is going to be used to track the entire movement of this ball. And now all we have to do now that we have the tracker here is click analyze. Okay, and we can see from the actual track that it loses track of the ball because the ball goes off the screen here. So I actually don't even want that part of the clip at all. So somewhere over here where it starts to get kicked off the screen, I think right about there where he starts to kick it, I'm actually just going to trim this clip off. So I'm going to hold down the option key and I'm going to hit the right square bracket. And that's just going to actually trim that clip back so that we don't need that part at all. And so now we have our tracker that's actually tracking the ball all the way around the screen. And you can see that it stays with the ball pretty well, doesn't seem to deviate much from it at all. So that's a pretty good track right there. And now that we actually have a tracked clip here, what we need to do is we need to create a duplicate of this clip that's going to sit on top. And that duplicate is going to be attached to this tracker and it's going to move around in the opposite direction that this tracker was. And that's why we invite the image in the first place because we wanted the tracker to be in the opposite direction as the clip that's actually going to be able to be seen. So to duplicate this clip, we're just going to hold down the option key. We're going to drag up on that clip and that will give us a duplicate copy. Now this duplicate will also have a tracker applied to it. So we want to actually delete that tracker because we don't want it on the final clip. And if we go back down to our original clip here, we can go down and let's rename this tracker to ball so that we know what it's actually tracking. 
And now all we actually have to do is attach this top clip here to the tracker that's on the other clip. So if we click on the clip here and we go up to our transform tool, that should give us the option here to choose a tracker. And if you go over to the tracker option here, click that little down arrow, we can choose the ball here. And what we have to do then is click on it again so it opens up and we do not want rotation on this track. So we're gonna uncheck rotation. The only thing we wanna actually be attached to is the position of that tracker. And so now, if we just kind of give it a quick watch through here, you can see the ball is here and the ball is essentially staying in the same spot now and we are locked on to that ball. Now you can see as we get to the end of this clip over here, that as it goes around, he kicks around the ball like this, that the video itself kind of slides over and you can see black over here. Now, if we zoom way out here like this, let's actually kind of take a look at this. So, so I have the bottom clip selected here and as I scroll through this, you can see that that bottom clip does not move at all. However, if I select the top clip, first of all, you can see that the top clip is bigger because we're kind of zoomed in on a little bit, but also as I move through this, that top clip is actually moving around, staying with the tracker itself. So as we get back here toward the end, the ball starts to get kicked off to the side. So the ball is kind of moving in the opposite direction as that tracker. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is adjust this a little bit so that we have the ball staying in the center of the screen. So to do that, I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna just click done like that. And I'm gonna open up my horizon overlay. And so I can do that by doing command shift H and that will open up the horizon overlay. I'm gonna actually zoom back into fit on this so we can see it. And as we scroll through this, we can see that the ball itself here is staying in this kind of lower left quadrant. It's staying like it's supposed to, right? That's exactly what we want. But we actually want to reposition the video a little bit so that the ball itself is kind of more here in the center. So if we click on our top clip here and we go up to our transform over here, if we just kind of pull this over like that, and then maybe we will bring it up a little bit so that the ball's kind of more in the center. Now, if we just kind of like scroll around this a little bit back and forth. Let's just make sure the video doesn't go off. Okay, so right here, it's a little too far off. So maybe we'll actually scale this up a little bit so it's a little further in on the ball like that. So now let's just kind of go back and just, it's we're just kind of playing around and repositioning the top clip so that it kind of stays in the center where we want it. And now, as you play through this, you can see the ball is essentially staying locked on. The camera looks directly at the ball, even if he's moving around back and forth. The only thing we're focusing on here is the ball itself. And that's really all you have to do to create this locked on effect. It's all about inverting the original image by using a negative scale, adding a tracker to that inverted image, and then duplicating the original clip, applying the tracker to the duplicated clip, and then just positioning it so that the ball is on the screen wherever you want it. Now, let me show you this exact same effect in a slightly different way. So I have this clip of some runners here. So I'm gonna grab those and I'm gonna drop that down here. Now, what I would like to do is stay locked onto this runner right here. So now with this clip of the runners, we're gonna follow the exact same process we did before. So I'm gonna click on that clip and then over here in scale, I'm going to set that to negative 120, and that's gonna invert the actual video by flipping it horizontally and vertically, and it's also gonna zoom in a little bit 20%. And what I'm gonna do now is a different way to apply a tracker, because like I said before, you can scroll down here and you can actually choose a tracker down here, or we can actually do it a different way. Now, if you wanna track something like a face, there's a much easier way to do that. So in this case, all I'm gonna do is go down here and pick any effect that I want. And the effect doesn't matter because ultimately we're gonna disable the effect. This just makes it easier to apply a track. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick Gaussian blur here and I'm just gonna drag that and pull it out onto the clip here. Now, as you put an effect over the viewer, by default, it's gonna use the magnetic mask. It's gonna to try to apply a magnetic mask here. Ever since Final Cut Pro 11, that's the default behavior. However, if you hold down the command key, it will switch back to using an object tracker. So you can then choose 
on people to actually track faces. You can see that Final Cut Pro is able to recognize when there's an actual face in the scene. So if we go ahead and we click on that person's face and we drop the tracker on there, you can see that what it did was apply that actual Gaussian blur to that face and it applied a tracker here. Now, in our situation here, we don't actually care about the Gaussian blur at all because I'm not really using that for the effect itself. I was just using that as a method to apply a tracker to the video. So what I can do is go up here to the Gaussian blur and I can just disable that. And then if I scroll down to the tracker that it created here, the tracker is still there. It just isn't applying the Gaussian blur, which is exactly what I want. All I care about is the tracker. And just like we did before, all we have to do is analyze that tracker, let it go through the process of actually keeping up with the track, and then we can follow the exact same steps that we did before with the soccer ball. And Final Cut Pro is quite good at tracking faces in this context, so you can see that the tracker is staying along with the face, it's not deviating from the face, it knows exactly where the face is. Okay, and now we have the tracker applied, and you can see that it went through and it applied the Gaussian Blur again, so we can just go up here and uncheck that so there's no actual effect here. And then if we hit Done, now the tracker is applied to this clip. And I'm not even, I don't even really need to rename this because Face Track just makes sense, so I'm going to keep it called that. And now, let's follow the exact same steps as before. So remember, we want to hold down the Option key, make a duplicate of the clip, and drop that on top. And then we're going to click on that clip here, and we're going to click on the Transform tool, and that's going to show us our tracker. So if we click on Tracker over here, and we choose Face Track, that will actually track that. And then I'm gonna click on it again so I can go up here and disable rotation because we do not want rotation to be tracked at all. And now, if we just kind of play through this, you can see that my person here, the person that I'm tracking, he is staying relatively uniform with the actual horizon here, okay? And so our tracker is doing exactly what we want it to. We can see that it's actually kind of moving off the screen a little bit. So let's do a little bit of positioning to kind of get it where we want it. So we'll just kind of move this, we'll move him kind of more over here toward the center like that. And I think I might try to move him down a little bit without actually like going off the screen. So let's see how that looks. Let's just kind of scroll back through it and look and it kind of comes off the screen over there. So I might zoom in a little bit on it again. Remember, you have to scale in the opposite direction like that. So let's just kind of look. We're just making sure that none of the video below gets exposed, but there we go. Now we are officially locked on to our actual runner, okay? And so if we just kind of like watch that back, you can see that the locked on effect is working. It's actually tracking everything like it should. And just one more time, let me zoom back out so you can see how this is actually playing out. If I click on the bottom one, the original clip is staying in place and the tracker is there. If I click on the top video, you can see that his face here should be directly opposite the tracker that's here. And so the tracker is down here in the bottom left quadrant. His face is up here in the top right quadrant. And as we kind of move through, you can see that the tracker moves down there and his face moves up. The tracker moves down and up. So his actual face is doing the opposite of what the tracker is. And so it's keeping it centered in the screen. And that is how this effect works. So that's all you have to do to create the lockdown effect in Final Cut Pro. Once again, a big thank you to Cody Warner who originally figured out this method and shared it with the rest of us, and now we can all be out here paying it forward, teaching everybody else how to do this. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like the video. Also make sure to comment down below, tell me all about different things that you are doing, different effects, different ways that you are having fun with Final Cut Pro. I would love to hear from you, and I would love it if you'd subscribe to the channel, as I would definitely like to get up above 5,000 in the next couple of months. As always, thanks so much for watching my videos, and if you enjoyed this video, then you're definitely going to like that one.